Ready? Welcome to Rhythm and Pixels Video Game Music Podcast, Episode 7 7. We're your hosts. I'm Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. That's a Pernell over there. We are getting together every week. I thought I heard a car go by. It's <laughs> <laughs> all fine. Don't worry about it. It's been a weird night so far. Um, we get together every week. We listen to some. We listen to some great video game music from all generations, all consoles, everything. Yes, we do. And in this particular case, this episode is coming under a special scenario, <laughs> which is why, for the purpose of what the next topic is going to be. I want to inarguably actually call this episode 7-8 so that we can revisit the old episode next week. Yeah, Pernell's all about the themes, man. Oh, I'm a theme monger. <laughs> but uh, basically, we're getting hit with a nasty storm tonight, and I'm going to be out of town for a few days, like, post-melting. Yeah. So we oh. had to come down to business. Actually, yeah, uh, shout-outs to uh, Pixel Tunes Radio, who did it first, because, you know, they're up there in new england and they've got like a they have like a really bad snowstorm and so they just were like hey we're we only live like a block away but we're gonna skype each other because we can't leave our homes well they've already hit they already had the hit <laughs> yeah they actually did an extra episode nice so, and it was a great one so if you're listening to this one you're looking for other podcasts check out pixel tunes radio with mike and ed those guys are awesome this is very true i can second that notion all right so uh, yeah, again, because of kind of the rush of uh, Pernell's going out to Chicago, which is cool, mm-hmm. and the impending snow apocalypse. Is that snow apocalypse or snow apocalypse? I always went with apocalypse, snow apocalypse. Uh, the snow, po- I like that because it's like almost like popsicles. Or you could say snockalypse, but then that's just disgusting. Okay. So the sn- I like snockalypse. Yeah, but it's booger related. Okay. Well, if I mean, the sky rained boogers, I think would you our be audience, happy with that? I think our audience will appreciate the, the booger jokes. And yeah, I think that would be amazing. <laughs> I guess it, people would be less averse to boogers if it ra- if it rained from the sky. What do you expect from Trump's America? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wah. Boogers, <laughs> <laughs> sky boogers, <laughs> farts. But, yeah. Well, um, so anyway, so this episode is going to be wild card, wild card, part two. This time it's personal, and <laughs> given the fact that we wild carded rushed this, these are all tracks from off the cuff. There was not we. I think this was all done in a matter of like five minutes. It was like okay, quick shot, go to your brain and come up with some stuff. And granted, I had backups. Like every episode, I have at least like five or six extra that I'm like just didn't didn't quite get in there. I keep them, but then I lose them. So it was like, I have Because well, you write but... everything on Post-it notes, and then they're gone. <laughs> this is true. I need memento. I need any Post-it notes with arrows pointing to Post-it notes. And if I, I pull it. that off, I'd be it. square. All right, so this is the wild card. We have no no topic. Free free topics. Oh, my God. I almost feel like I wasted it, but I don't give a crap. The tracks I picked are solid tunes. Uh, I want to hear some solid tunes. Pernell, what's your first... Solid track. Solid gold per now. It's from a game that more people should play, and they'll get a chance to, because I believe it's actually getting re-released soon on the PS4, but that game is called Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, also known as 999, and the track that I chose is called Ternary Game. That is T-E-R-N-A-R-Y, because I like it. Game. And if you don't like it, I'll be sad. But oh, wow, try so to enjoy. You're like you, you want, you want me to like it that much? I would. Yes. If you don't, I'll I'll sob. I'll sob a lot. <laughs> so please, be I'm happy all, to enjoy. I will be happy. I don't want to make you sad again. <laughs> that is true. <laughs>
Hopefully you enjoyed that spectacular track. I did. I very much did. I, I was really into that guitar. That's what's up. Yeah, this is a game. The game being Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, a.k.a. 999. That's like a really intriguing title. Like if I saw that like on a box, like on the box cover, on the box art, I mean, I would be really interested in that game. That sounds It sounds very mysterious. The funny thing about it is, if I remember correctly, it sold really poorly at first. <laughs> it didn't pick up until word of mouth kind of spread it. Well, I have a feeling it's it's kind of like a visual novel situation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a visual novel slash puzzle. Oh, um, puzzle. Flash puzzle game. I'm sticking with that. Hate me if you want. Puzzle. It's a we, puzzle we did, game. We did puzzle games last week. Pretty. <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> Crap. I guess I better go with puzzle game then. There you go. Um, yeah, it's a story slash puzzle game on the DS, and I can't really say much about spoiling, but essentially, you're nine. There's nine people that have nine hours to get out of a place by solving a series of puzzles involved in something called the Nonary Game, and. It's a very mysterious game, and it's just that you come in with very little to no information, and you kind of discern it all as you play through it. It's an awesome title that requires multiple playthroughs to get the true ending, and while that usually seems awful, in this game, it is not. It's actually really fun. I played through it four playthroughs, and I did them almost back to back to back to back I'm obsessively. No yeah. I did it in less than a week. Wow. So because this, this game was, really gripped you, huh? It really did. It really, really did. And I recommend it to any and everybody that could get their hands on it. This track in particular played during one of the puzzle, is one of the puzzle room themes that you had to deal with. So whenever this theme came up, I got excited. It's like, okay, puzzle time. Let's go <laughs> solve this bad boy. It's so much fun. I, I love like the, the, the jungle rhythm. That's like really fast. And then like, it gets kind of um, like atonal, like towards this, the middle of it. And then as soon as it cuts out into this section, it breaks and then that cool piano comes in. This is a really sweet, cool track. And I feel like at least with this one, I can't speak for every other track just yet, but at least with this one, I feel like it was a good choice for a wild card episode because the only thing I can really think of it fitting into would have been like visual novels. Yeah, but, well, we, I don't know if we are going to pick that. You topic. might. That's a cool. That's a cool idea because there's a lot of that kind of stuff on the DS. But this is a really, really cool like. A, Cool in like the, the the truest sense of the word cool. You know what I mean? Like a cucumber. Yeah, like I, I can hear this like you know, like 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 in a club, you know, like at a bar. Oh, like a oh, stretch central. Yeah, like well, like you know, it's kind of smoky with the lights down low. Yeah, I can see that. Well, along that that tip, um, my track is is kind of similar in that coolness. How, what do you think about that? Well, I have to see it here to believe it. To be honest. Oh, did I say the name of the composer? Just want to make sure I didn't screw that up. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, Shinji Hosoe. Good, good, good. <laughs> Don't want to be that guy. So uh, my first track is uh, Mega Track from the Mega Drive. So I, got, I got to go Mega Drive on a wild card episode. There's a lot of Mega going on here. <laughs> and it's, but it's not Mega Man. Is it a Mega's cover? No. <laughs> oh. No, this is from the game Rolling Thunder 2 for the Mega Drive. Um, this is called The Selection. So this is when you're selecting a stage. Um, and it's composed by Ayako Sasso. little short selection from the game Rolling Thunder 2 is also called The Selection. <laughs> selection! Uh, composed by Ayako Sasso. And this is a really, really cool soundtrack. And I know this is like probably one of the shortest like little um, tracks in the game, but I just think it's so cool. One, the drums sound like it's straight out of Streets of Rage 2. And um, I love that sound. And it's just super neat. Like I feel like it can just loop for a while and I'd still be cool with it. Well, I mean, it gets the job done, and to be perfectly honest, the loop kicked in pretty quickly, but until you pointed it out, I didn't outright even catch it. I was just like, okay, I'm waiting for the change, but I like what I'm hearing, so I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's got that kind of like cool jazzy lick, and then, you know what it is? It could be like a rap instrumental, you know, where it's like, it's it loops really short, but it's got enough interest in it that you don't notice right away, so if someone was like rhyming or singing on top of it, you wouldn't really know it. Or am I just reaching? Am I really grasping at this one? Oh, you're <laughs> reaching for the stars and falling short. But it's okay. That's why we like you, because you're awesome dude who tries. Aw. Sometimes. 
you know, sometimes I sometimes I come in here and I'm like, yeah, I know what's up. Sometimes it's Rolling Thunder 2. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it sounds good. Do it. It doesn't matter if it's short or long. Yeah, it is. I wanted a I wanted a cool jazzy Rolling Thunder track from the Mega Drive. This is what I got. Yeah, I think it succeeded. So don't this sweat. is what this is my gift to you. A short but effective loop. <laughs> That's right. So hey, there you go. Um, I was hoping maybe uh, I could inspire you to, to drop some rhymes on this one, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Nah! Also, because I'm multitasking like a mofo over here. Otherwise, <laughs> I, otherwise, I totally would. That, and I'm, I, I'm onto your sick game. Uh, yeah, I know, right? I'm just trying to trick you. I'm just trying to trick you into a crazy, mad, uh, dope performance. You're trying to trick me into enjoying myself, and it's not gonna work. <laughs> I won't fall for your sick games. <laughs> it's like. The, well, Pernell, uh, all 67 episodes of this podcast has just been for you to have a good time. It's my sick, twisted arc. S- so damn sinister. I'm hip to you, dude. Don't you worry. But it's okay. I'm going to soldier on with a frown on my face and a new track to play. You're going to pick like the most depressing track you could think of. <laughs> Actually... No, well, good. <laughs> this good. may still have a. It may sound like it, but this is purely coincidental. I can assure you that. So, all right. Next track I'm going to pick from is another track that I feel like could have been on another episode, but uh, I'm not sure if I would have thought about this should the topic have actually come up. So, another no shame, no sorry selection. This is from the game Jump Ultimate Stars from Ooh. way back on the Nintendo DS yeah, that's days, a, that's just a f- like 999. Super fun one. And the track is called Collapse. It's the stem theme from the very last stage of the game, and I can't help but not be able to find the composer because this is elusive as crap. I take no shame in that. That's all right. So collapse. <laughs> Welcome back. Return from the sunken place. For you are listening to the track Collapse from the game Jump Ultimate Stars from a composer of which I have no idea. No, but I can tell you this. I think you've won the podcast. Really? This song is awesome. I'm so into this. Oh, thank you very much. And it's, not, and it's not just like the, that crunchy guitar. I, I like it goes halftime on the second the second uh, chorus. And I just I love that. It's just so neat. There's so much going on. There's that... This little trumpet section, I was not expecting. It gets you really pumped, too, for the level it plays on. It's the 
the very last stage of Jump Ultimate Stars if you're doing the campaign mode. So real quick, so Jump Ultimate Stars for the Nintendo DS is famous manga characters from Shonen Jump. Yes. And then it's almost like a Smash Brothers style fighting game. Exactly. With the intent being to like, you can actually, if I remember correctly, I think you can actually like, kill a guy too. Like you can actually kill them as a smash you to knock them out, but you can also knock them off the manga page. Like they'll tear through the paper. That's awesome. And fall off the oh, side. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Cause we used to, you used to have like, we used to bring our DSs together and you can play single cart with like multiple players. And that was really fun. Yes, it was. And you, and unfortunately due to not being able to read Japanese, we didn't get the full extent of the game because you could do you just have to do switch offs of the kick because you had multiple people on your character party. And you could switch between them by touching comic book panels on the lower screen. But depending on how the dialogue lined up and the different characters you paired up, they had different abilities and power ups and boosts, which I never quite got the hang of. But I just love the idea of like, you know, doing like tap, 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 because you get like Luffy up. I pretty much used mainly all the guys from One Piece and a girl yeah. named Eve who had crazy warping like magic hair. Well, it's cool that you could have like One Piece against like Naruto, against. Fist of the North Star, like crazy stuff. It was a lot of fun. And then that's how I learned about Bobo 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 because he was in that game. And I think that was before the show had that temporary release in the States. So was um was Yu Yu Hakusho in there? I yeah, there were characters from that in oh, there too. I love those guys. They're so funny. I think one of them could be a battle character, maybe two of them, because I think Hiei was a battle character too. Okay. Yusuke and Hiei, I think, were battle characters. Oh, Nakuabara. Not cool bar. Oh, he's, he's a support uh, he's character. The, oh, well, he's in it though. Yeah, he's in it. He was a support oh, character. Awesome. Though. But uh Kubara. <laughs> You're meshy. I don't care how he sounds in Japanese. All I care is that American nineties voice actor is the best. Yep, yeah, I get I can relate to that. Like, there's been like a lot of talk of uh like recently specifically, like Sailor Moon came up because I guess they recently did one of the movies in like US theaters. They did a redubbing of it and stuff. And my friend went to go see it. I was talking to her and I said, you know, I'm sorry. I don't care how many redubs you give. I can't step away from the original U.S. dub of the show. Sub or not, I don't need it. Because those are the voices that I know from those characters. Yes. Some aren't good, but you had you had a grade school girl who was dating a 30-year-old man who talked like she was from like, like she was like 20, like in at least in her late 20s in New York City. Hey there, hey there, Serena. <laughs> I'm already late for school because, yeah. <laughs> she sounds like one of the Golden Girls. Yes, it was ridiculous. <laughs> All their voices were, like, so exaggerated. <laughs> it was cool. awesome. I know. Uh, something about that was just really fun. I really liked that. Oh, uh, actually, Mike from um, Pixel Tunes Radio had posted uh, a, a picture or an uh, animated GIF from a, a comedy miniseries. I can't remember the name of it anymore, but it's a guy who rides a bike, and he's always Oh, Golden Boy. What's it called? Golden Boy. Golden Boy. Study, 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 study. <laughs> Gun, Not Golden. appropriate for this podcast. Not at but all. But it's a great show but if the, you are but, age already for it. But the English voice actors are just hilarious. Like, oh, yes, like they the, were. the comedic timing, like everything was like right on. And when I first heard his voice in the show, I was like, this guy sounds stupid as it, anything. It's like, supposed to. I, I loved it. I yeah, it worked. Yeah. By the end, it was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I did not expect to like the show because I would go to the store and I would see it on the shelf. And for the record, this is back in the game when anime was like stuck to next to the adult section and it had no business being there and yet Golden Boy belonged there <laughs> in his own weird way. But um, I was like, that show just seems dumb. It's like just just to well, draw people in because it's like, you know, risque or well, whatever. It was like um, it was like it was like the uh, like the 80s, like summer camp, like Porky's or Meatballs like type show where it's like, you know, the guy's constantly trying to get the girl and but he's clueless. Oh, yeah. Like, it's silly. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to watch it to find it, though, because oh, unfortunately man, the advertisements were terrible for it. Oh, yeah. But he should have been in this game because that would have been funny. He would have his bike. Honestly, it wouldn't be surprised Smacking if he is there somewhere. <laughs> he might be riding his bike through, like dropping newspapers or, you know, dropping a, a freaking programmable laptop computer that'd be funny because he did all kinds of weird stuff in yeah. that show well, let's move on from that how about that <laughs> collapse <laughs> all right um actually i am going to move on to another unknown composer how about that i couldn't i couldn't find one uh, for this game but i found it when i was searching through sega saturn music just any sega saturn music oh um this is called pro yakiyu greatest nine Oh, from Konami? I think it's the Konami baseball game? Uh, yeah, it's a baseball game. Pro Yakiyu Greatest Nine, 1998. Summer action. <laughs> That's a long title. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's all summer themed. It's like they're playing on the beach. It looked really cool. Um, again, for the sake of Saturn, uh, Japanese only. Uh, this is Background Music 7. 
and composer is unknown. I couldn't locate it. So enjoy. I filed this under um, sexy party music. <laughs> <laughs> we can still do that theme because I would just pick stuff from Streets of Rage 2 and call it a day. <laughs> Totally. So I hope you enjoy some sweet, sexy Saturn tunes. <laughs> are jamming out to the music background music seven from the game pro yakiyu greatest nine summer action 98 god that name is so good it's so good i mean it's so japanese right we have to have like five titles just to say that no no it's not just the greatest nine it's summer action 1998 gotta put it all on the place for oh you. by the way i far this is filed under sexy party music but sexy party music from 1998, because this is so 90s. Oh, I love this song. Well, let's be honest, though. The 90s were where it was at. It just got worse from there, so. Mm. Well, I'm being a jerk. I'm being an oldies jerk. There's there's good stuff in the later years, but the 90s and 90s-themed things, you're not talking that. This section right here, it's like a buddy cop flick. You're hitting the mean streets. Then the top goes down. Mm, oh, yeah. this is the relaxing part. I'm about to say, this is when they're just chilling out. I thought we were after some drug dealers. No, man. We're just cruising. Drug dealers cross the state line. We have the rest of the day off. <laughs> well, that would be the worst excuse for having the day off. Well, they just went across state lines. Should we continue the investigation? No, inform no. The, yeah. uh, the, the district, you know, the precinct in that district? Uh, nah. Uh, uh, Officer Purnell, it's not my jurisdiction. <laughs> not my jurisdiction. How about you and I go play some baseball on the beach? That would be a very difficult game of baseball. But yeah, let's try it. I know. I, I thought so, too. <laughs> you came up with the idea to do well, that's it. Well, that's, that's the cover art. People playing baseball. On the beach. On the beach. That's on the cover? Yeah. Oh, that's just ridiculous. Pretty crazy. Maybe that's what they were going for. They were going for the impossible game of baseball. Oh, this is such a good song. But I'm into it. I see. I'm not going to just yield victory to you <laughs> because I, I have pride, but I will say that you, you did well, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you. Well. Cha -la -la -la. Mm. Mm. We're mm. going to do another wild card episode in the future though, with more planning because I've got to, I got to crack my knuckles and go all in with this. Oh, this track's going to be in the next bonus beats, like without a doubt. <laughs> Are you going to like slap it in there and throw some? No, it's just going to be an hour of this. Oh, all right. <laughs> Honestly, I can't complain about that. All right, so um, 
we're on to what? Track number three? A three. A three. A three. And funny enough, I think I chose one once a long time ago. But even with that in mind, Rob made an interesting point about this track. And the fact oh, I that, did? Yeah, you did. You did in the sense <laughs> that once in a while. I picked a track from a Sonic game. And being as popular as Sonic is, and for as many games as Sonic has had, we have picked very, very few Sonic-based things. I've had a couple in the in the in the on the holster for future episodes, yeah, but we've had very few Sonic games on the show. Yeah, but that's going to change today, because the track I want to pick is from a game that deserved way more appreciation than it got, because I thought it even managed to get across and break that dreaded Sonic cycle, huh. at least for a little while. Um, that track is from the game Sonic Generations on the 360 PS3, and the track itself is related to the stage Crisis City, the classic version of it, and it was composed by not Jin Tsunoue. What? It was no, as no, no, I don't want to hear it, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to hear it. It was composed by Tomoya Otani. back you are jamming out to crisis core classic from the game sonic generations an underappreciated game but it's a good game nonetheless mm, very good done and composed by tomoya otani yeah it does not sound like a june senua uh kind of sound but it's got a lot of guitar in it it's still so still with the guitar yep because i guess they at that point they were just kind of committed to it like this was a remix of a track from a uh, game that is hated and for good reason um sonic the hedgehog 2006 um quite possibly known as the true turning point of god awful for the sonic the hedgehog series <laughs> but there have been games since then that have been good just not really acknowledged for that but this is a track that when i heard it and i played the stage i was like man i wonder how they're going to take that awful awful game and make it into a stage that's actually playable and fun and that feels that they'd not they actually pulled that off with sonic generations so Essentially, the game was just an uh, excuse to have 3D and 2D levels and one Sonic game together by creating a time MacGuffin storyline where both Sonics are pulled in the same place, past and present, because clearly Sonic gets older but doesn't and learns to run <laughs> face it away from the screen or whatever. It's ridiculous. Wow. I fit in these stories in the Sonic games. Just have Sonic save cute bunny rabbits, right? But that's why this game, I actually kind of liked it. And I think they started a trend at this point because they started making fun of their own stories. Like, I remember getting to the end of the game and uh, you come across Dr. Robotnik and the other Dr. Robotnik because there's two of them now. And then all of Sonic's friends, like from both the old games and the new games, show up. Like, you can do it, Sonic, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And then one of the Robotniks, like the older one who's never met all the new friends they created in the newer games, 
He's like, who are all these people? And then or the newer robot is like insignificant. <laughs> because so many people like to trash you on oh, I know. It's all like, the newer no characters. No one cares about these guys. Don't worry about it. I, I laughed really hard at that point. It's like insignificant. <laughs> it's like, but they genuinely go out of their way to like play make jokes on that at their own expense on their games and it pays off. That's good. I mean I think they need to. Oh, they really do. Yeah. They really, really do. They really do. So that's also, I think, why when they came up with that, they attempted to do a Sonic Boom cartoon. I didn't stick with the cartoon because mm. I suck at making time for TV. Well, yeah. I mean, it's hard to make time for a lot of TV. It really, really is. Especially if you're always trying to play games and, you know, live a life and do crazy, ridiculous stuff like snowboarding on the K9, K12. Yeah, I know. You're, you're just a crazy stuntman and you're just trying to live your life. That's right, in the most reckless way possible. Absolutely. For the, for the ladies. <laughs> and for the paycheck. Well, talk about reckless. Here comes my next track. How about that for a segue? <laughs> <laughs> I actually did like that. Well played, sir. Right, so my next track isn't <laughs> super, like, dangerous or anything. I don't know. You already <laughs> set yourself up for danger. I thought, I, I thought I'd try to bring things back down from, like, this crazy, awesome uh, guitar riff, which I'm really into, actually, but... You've had two awesome guitar riffs. You know that. I'm just naturally drawn to guitars. Yeah, it's just they just it's like the Pied Piper you hear and you just start following it, right? Yeah, like yeah, whether it's pretty much all genres of music I listen to. When you think about it, ultimately always come back to the guitar. Whether it's through like just rocking solos or just through downing reverb. Yeah, it's always guitar. <laughs> it's how I roll. Well, this this one is something I was looking out for when I was exploring the Dragon Quest series um, soundtracks. So I think you might be into this one. This is from Dragon Quest II for the Super Nintendo. It's called A Lonely Youth by Koichi Sugiyama. Listening to a lonely youth from the game Dragon Quest II for the Super Nintendo, composed by Koichi Sugiyama. So I'm taking it this was maybe a re-release of the second game for NES, which I didn't even know. I know I know they made a bunch, but I never heard any of the music from any of the re-releases. This sounds really cool. Yeah, it looks like Enix went and had Dragon Quest. Um, Dragon Quest. Oh my God, <laughs> Drag. <laughs> I thought, I, for some reason, I didn't think it was a quest. Dragon Quest 1 and 2 um, for the Super Famicom. Oh, nice. It was like a single cart. Yeah. Um, um, and it's just really cool. I love the way it's composed, especially the way it resolves at the end. I love the, um, the kind of like, it sounds like a dulcimer. It's like, dong, 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 dong. It sounds so nice. This is, I love this game. Even though I've never played through it to completion, I do love it. This was me attempting i mean the first rpg i really played played like got into was final fantasy one but yeah me too this was me attempting to try to get into them even though i had no idea what i was doing and i've still played quite a bit of this game for being somewhat completely confused about the game and how it played well tell me 
I played Dragon Warrior on the NES. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Um, the U.S. releases were dubbed Dragon Warrior okay. by Enix when they came to America, but uh, the Japanese name was always Dragon Quest. So that really clears it up for me then. <laughs> yeah, what ended up happening was uh, when Dragon Quest Eight came out on the PS2, that was when they finally decided to get the actual lettering correct, the actual words correct. Oh, okay. Up until then, they were calling it Dragon Warrior. Yeah, I, I never bothered to look into it. I never played anything past the very first one, which, I mean, was as flawed as it was. was still a lot of fun. It really was. And honestly, if looking back on it, it's hard to even... I don't even really call it flaws so much. I wouldn't play it so much now, though, because it, it would bore me. But it was really simple, but also very effective. You were one guy... Never got a party. No. And you only ever fought one enemy at a time. But you were never really told what to do yeah. or where to go. That was it a little was just... challenging for a young Rob Nichols trying to figure out where to go. And then you walk one tile too far to the to the um, north and a freaking like orange wizard shows up with his razzy tongue and wrecks your well, face. One thing I do remember was this game came with Nintendo Power. Not the well. The game actually is a weird thing. Cause I know there I was a point where they gave away the drag, the strategy guy for free, and there was also a point where was, if yeah. you get no, no, you were right though. They did the guy once, but they also did do a promo where if you got a full year subscription, they gave this game away for free. But it was for it was. a short time. So the company was really doubling down on let's get Americans interested in RPGs, and I think it worked because I remember being really young and playing it and trying to figure it out and, and having the strategy guide there and, and understanding it. And, and suddenly this whole this whole world of RPG games kind of opened up to me and I understood them and, 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 and really enjoyed them. Whereas I did not get so lucky because I already had a subscription to Nintendo Power when this offer came out, so I missed the boat. Couldn't uh, convince my parents to re-up because, quite frankly, they didn't think about free game. They just said, you already get the magazine. Shut up. <laughs> That's so. okay. I, I didn't have a Nintendo or Nintendo Power. I was at my cousin's house <laughs> playing his game. Hey, got the job done, right? Yeah. Bonding moments, play games. But I did have um, Final Fantasy after this one, and that, that one really... Um, I played that a lot. Actually, in high school, when everyone's playing Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> I got into Final Fantasy one. Mm -hmm. The weird challenges, you know, trying to like beat the game with all white mages, that kind of thing. Oh, God, good luck with that. Yeah. I know people have done it, but I've never even wanted so much as try. Yeah, a lot of time. Anyway. It took a lot of time. That's very frustrating. I had to buy all the freaking spells. They were expensive Excruciating. Yeah, yeah, pretty rough. But now this is a lovely track. It's just very calming. Soothing. Yeah. It's kind of strange, like with the impending storm that we're listening to like this nice relaxing tune and i still intend to do some magic out there too so i'm gonna be dashing through the snow yeah we'll, we'll be dashing through the snow <laughs> true true wait wasn't that a get out of the city well that was one of his i think he had a no nah, jingle all the way was his jingle movie. all the way dashing through the snow he never said that. i'm sure he did no he didn't don't 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 ice to meet you Okay, well, I think he said that, actually, didn't he? Everybody freeze. <laughs> God, that movie was <laughs> Why would you invoke Batman and Robin on this show? Because every time I think of it, it makes me laugh. If I need to smile, I think of all of the puns that Arnold Schwarzenegger did. The off punzels. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bring this track all the way down so that we can have a good old bonus round. Bonus round, babies! <laughs> Woo! Yahoo! <laughs> all right! The bonus round is the part of the show where we play covers and remixes based on a theme. And you know what? There's no theme today. Just a wild card. Yeah, it was. But it still yielded some nice results, I think. So what did you find? Well, I'm having a tough call, so I'll let you make that decision. I either was going to go with a band that is not a remix at all. Wait, didn't we do Rock, Paper, Scissors earlier? We did. But during the show, <laughs> I was like, I want to see if I could come across a remix for this track. And I came across one. So that's from a game, but it's your decision. All right. So it's either going to be a remix from a game or a band that has nothing to do with a game and the track has nothing to do with a game. But they're gamey? Sort of. Let's hear the game track. Okay, so stick with the game stick track. Stick with the game track. In that case, Let's do that. this is from a game that I've always been a fond of, fond fan of, the series rather. The series being called Etrian Odyssey. Now, 
This is a remix by a doujin band. This is basically like a Japanese fan band. Yeah, doujin um, style things in Japanese is like indie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is done. This was done before the Etri and Odyssey Untold games were released. So I don't know 100% how similar it is because I haven't played this far in Etri and Odyssey Untold. But... If they have any similarities, this was first. So just pointing that out. <laughs> All right. Um, the track is called Destruction Begets Decay, which is the original name of the track, but it's just done by this band called Aether, and it is from their album called Yggdrasica. So hopefully it sounds good because I liked it. So we'll see if you like it too. Awesome, man. 
Thank you. Like I had another track from the game in mind, but then when I picked it and I listened to it, I was like, I don't think this one has the much, as much of an appeal unless you're already really fond of the game proper. So that was cool. I mean, it wasn't even just like a fast guitar thing. Like it had a really cool, like the melody on the on the keyboard was really cool. But I love the harp in the background where it was like. I know it's a, probably a keyboard, like arpeggio. But it sounds. But I'm, I like imagining like a full rock band and like someone on a harp just like plucking at it real fast for like five minutes. Like, you know, <laughs> Sometimes the imagination takes it the best way, oh, so I'm all so about awesome. that. I say let's stick with it. <laughs> There's a harpist back there. All right, so my next track is a chip tune from the artist She. And... <laughs> I had a remix picked out, but I had already played it on the show. Way to go, Rob. Anyway, this is from the artist. She is from her uh, album. It's called Pioneer, and this track is called Streets. And this is this this has been in my chiptune mix for a long time. So hope you dig it. Straight from the streets. <laughs> That was Streets um, from the album Pioneer by the artist She, and that is just an awesome album. She does something. She, she's using Game Boys, I believe, and and some other keyboards and things. But the whatever she's doing to the sound, like it's a filter or some kind of like distortion, some kind of pedal that she's using, it's got such a warm sound. Like it gives like a really warm tone. It's it's very rich. I was enjoying it though. At the same time, it should have really given me a clue when you called, said the track was called Streets. But while the track was playing. <laughs> I was sitting here like I was removing the headphones and putting them back on. Like, do I hear voices? Yeah, like in the back. I guess they recorded like street sounds and stuff, and it's like way in the background. It's like, but it's still there. I had to pause like the track and like listen again. Was... Um, but yeah, if you like that, check her out on on her Bandcamp. She has many many albums actually, and some some are just coming out, and it's all fantastic stuff. So for more information on these artists on the bonus round part of the show, go to rhythmandpixels.com, and we'll have links to their band camps and their sound clouds and everywhere else that you can find their music. have been listening to episode 7-7 of Rhythm and Pixels Wild Card Part 2 this time it's personal and how <laughs> in that these tracks were personal to us 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, you might think because they were all pulled out of a hat within five minutes that <laughs> these were tracks that had no conscious effort put into them. But you would be wrong. I, th- I like no. They were just they were just tracks that just we didn't have any um, anything to bind them together. That is correct, but that doesn't make them any less awesome. No, they're all they were all awesome. I really liked your picks tonight. Thank you very much. And you can bet more wild card episodes will have to be down the pike because you'd be surprised, listener, just how often we come across tracks where we're just kind of scrambling to come up with with what idea, what theme to put them into. And sometimes, you know, life gets in the way and then we just have to kind of go with it. But we we do have some interesting topics coming up. Um, The next one is definitely ready to roll. The one after that. Not so much, but it's definitely listener suggested and weird, strange, but the stranger, the better. I concur. I want more strange topics, more strange <laughs> topics. <laughs> well, if you have some of those crazy topics, why don't you send us an email at rhythm and pixels at hotmail.com. And for more information about the show and for a full track listing, go to the website, rhythm and Check us out on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at rhythm underscore n underscore pixels. And uh, why don't you give us a buzz over there on Facebook or even on Instagram at rhythm and pixels, all one word. Um, every Thursday, I'm doing a live stream of, of uh, DJ sets of remixes and in, in, um, chip tunes. So if you're into that kind of thing, tune in to Facebook. Um, I might uh, restream it over at twitch.tv slash rhythm and pixels. So you might check that out too. And every once in a while, a little known Purnell might show in to wish him luck. A wild Purnell may appear. This is true. I would hope he appears. Maybe not, maybe not this week or last week because Purnell's in Chicago. Yes. So, I will be gone. Was gone. Well, have a safe trip, my friend. Thank you very much. I hope to. As long as this weather doesn't get bonkers. On You're going to the, one of the coldest places ever. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> your per, your Purnell coat of uh, heat, heat plus four, which makes me sad because that to- that coat's retiring this year. Oh, is it? It has to. That thing's got holes upon holes, but I refuse to get oh, rid of it. Man. But I have to make the conscious decision to give a crap about what I look like <laughs> in the streets. So it has to go. Oh, that's a shame, man. But it served me well for what five years, seven yeah. years. It's a nice, it's a nice thick one for the for the harsh harsh winters we've been having. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, real quick, um, if if you're if you're a listener, if you are an artist, or if you are a remixer, a cover artist, if you if you're part of a band, if you know a band, and if you would like um, you like for us to listen to your music, and if we like it, we can play it on the show. We can put it on some of our mixes. We would love to hear it. Any anything new, so send it our way, uh, rhythmandpixels at hotmail dot com, or on our Facebook. Just let us know. We're always looking for new stuff. That's that's a good idea. I didn't even think about that because yeah, it's one thing to go out and scout for music, but hey. We like to showcase new music, yeah. and what better way to get it than from people who outright want to have their music showcased? Yeah, it doesn't have to be, I mean, even if it's um, not video game related, if you're using video game hardware, we'd love to hear it. Or if it's inspired by video game music, that, that's really great, too, because it has a very s- special kind of sound. Though. That was Aethernaut's whole thing, and yeah, that was absolutely. awesome. Yeah, he's all about like like drawing from that nostalgic sound, but putting a lot of emotion into his music, and, and I, I really love that sound. So you've been listening to the Rhythm and Pixels video game music podcast. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Have a great week. Thank you very much for listening. Wild card episode. So this is completely ridiculous and off the cuff, but here you have it. Topic came up recently that prompted me to want to say this. Games are fun. Music is great. But everyone's taste may not be so much the same. And as a result of that, you might get some crazy opinions out there whether they're crazy good or crazy bad, that may not necessarily be mesh with what you believe or desire or want to believe. Instead of going off the cuff and wanting to kick people in the gonads or whatever it is people do when they get excessively angry, either two things can be done. Just enjoy the opposing opinion. Maybe you might learn something different that you didn't foresee about the product that you're reading a review for. Or if you're already setting your ways and you really don't care, Just walk the other direction. I think I'll hurt you. So, honestly, just live and let live. Share. And listen if you so desire. And otherwise, just enjoy what you like and be done with it. You'll be happier in the long run for it. I can promise you that. There it is. Winning. Winning. I give this podcast... 
11 out of 10.